be Melissa Armo from the Stock Swoosh. Uh, Melissa, I'm going to go ahead and unmute your mic. Unmute it. Do you see your screen? Okay. Melissa, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes, I can hear you and I can see your screen, so you have the floor. Great. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. Hope everyone is having a great morning. The market is definitely having a great morning today. Market's rallying. The queues are rallying. The spy is rallying. Facebook's rallying. So <clears throat> we're going to talk today really about volatility, which you've, su which you've seen actually mostly towards the end of 2018. And really now 2019 has started to be uh, more of that, where you think sometimes the market's going down, then it flips around. And it's going to be a very interesting year to trade. So you have to forgive me. I have a little bit of a cold today, but I'm going to try to make it through uh, the 45-minute talk. If you have questions, you can write it in the room, and I will see the question. And we're going to talk about one strategy to profit from volatility in the market. This is me. For those of you that know me, I appear on Fox News and Fox Business Network. In fact, you can watch me tomorrow. I will be on Charles Payne Show Making Money at 2 o'clock Eastern Time on Fox Business. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at the stock .com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. And so we're going to talk about volatility. If you are a day trader, okay, then volatility is good. If you're a swing trader, volatility is good. When, when is volatility bad? Maybe if you're in some long-term investments or retirement account where you get scared, if one quarter you see a statement and then the next quarter you see a completely different statement, but overall the uptrend in the market is, is holding. And actually I called it and I even said it on Fox in December that the bullish trend was still intact. A lot of people disagree with me. I think it's very obvious now that you can see the way the markets rallied in January 2019. Today's the last day of the month. We're going to close this last day of January to start this first month of the year very bullishly. Okay. And Amazon earnings are out tonight. Nobody knows what's going to happen with those earnings. But I will tell you that if Amazon gaps up tonight, the market will gap up tomorrow morning and we'll make another run up to start up February. So very good start to 2019. But if you are an active trader, which I am, the volatility is really how you can make a lot of money. It can be very lucrative. So it's not scary. It's not scary no matter what if you know how to read it, even for your long-term positions. The problem is that many times when you see a sell-off like we saw in December, which, which we did sell off, the market sold off in December and many stocks did with it too, you can get scared if you don't understand it. And so some people killed positions they were in in that month because they really thought the market was collapsing, even though it really wasn't, which I, which I said. I'm going to just briefly go over here. I have the results through the 29th in the trading room this year. And I didn't update this since yesterday and today. I will and put it on YouTube if you want to go look. But this is an advanced risk so far through the 29th, over 31,000 for the trading room. And it was this isn't even the full month because at the beginning of the month, I actually had the room closed. I was off at the beginning of the holiday. So the profits that you can make for actively day trading are real, okay? You can make money day trading, but I'm very focused on what I do, extremely focused on what I do. And in fact, I try not to do more than one symbol a day, but occasionally I will. Three symbols, though, is a lot for me. Usually we do one. We might do two. Three is a lot, but I think you can uh, make more money if you're more focused. So I focus on one specific strategy, and the strategy that I do is gaps. So I like to focus on the morning. We open the trading room at 8.30, and then I start talking maybe around 9, but we're looking to enter the trades between 9.30 and 10. It's not that you have to kill a trade by 10 a.m. Eastern time, but you might be in a trade into 10.15, 10.30, but I'm really looking to focus on that first part of the day. And that's where you see the most volatility in stocks that are gapping. Now I'm going to explain to you what a gap is in a minute if you don't know what that is. And so here's a chart of the market. This is a chart of the SPY. So what do I do? I do gaps. Now what's a gap? And I squished this together here because I really wanted you to see the drop off and the rally that we had in 2018. The market made new highs, fell, dropped off, based out here this most of the year, made new highs, reached out in the late, late summer. This was 2018. Here's the drop off. Here's December. And here's where we are. I don't have the chart up today, but we're obviously we're rallying. So anyways, long story short, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So each day down here, this is a daily chart. I'm going to just show you what is a gap. 
Here's where the market closed. Again, this is a chart of the SPY, which is the ETF of the S&P. Here's where the market closed this day. Here's where it opened. So it gapped down. So what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. That's it. That's all that it is. You can also have bullish gaps. Here was a bullish gap up here. Market closed here this day at one price and opened at a higher price and rallied. Okay, that's what we're doing today. The market gapped up this morning and is now pushing higher and rallying. So a gap is the difference between the close and the open. The, the U.S. stock market, uh, which is all that I trade, closes every day at 4 o'clock and opens every morning the next day at 9.30. So not everything gaps every day, but a lot of things do gap. Now, not every gap is playable or what I call predictable. So what I designed is a specific strategy where I will rate the gap in the pre-market to determine if it's a long or a short on the live day. I do not take positions in the pre-market, okay? We also trade stocks that are well known or you can look them up and see what they are, recognize the companies that have volume. Do not trade penny stocks or very, very dirt cheap things. We want to do stuff that you can be in it and you can get a move. And again, I'm going back to volatility. You get movement, big, big moves, again, like you're seeing today in the market, from volume and institutions that go long stocks or the market or sell positions or short, okay? So we would be shorting with the institutional moves that drop the stocks or we would be buying stocks or you could buy be long the market today. Institutions are buying the market today. Okay, that's how it's getting a lift. So day trading really is a great job because you can work from home and the only obstacle you really have to making a, a, you know 30 grand a month or even more is what? Is your risk, okay? It's about the risk that you take per trade. Now that's an advanced risk of at least $1,500 a trade, somewhere up to 2,000. When you're choosing to do this though, if you're gonna risk $1,500 a trade or even if you're gonna risk $500 a trade, you have to know what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing or you will lose, okay? So a lot of people trade the market and don't know what they're doing. And in fact, they think that they know what they're doing, but they really don't. So it is about the consistency. So the consistency has to be not just with your risk per trade, the consistency has to do with your strategy. And it's rare that I will go long and short something on the same day. Now, sometimes I will, but it's rare that I, I ever take one long and one short you know, on the same day but I never go long and short the same symbol in the same day. So I could take one symbol and I go long, and I might take one symbol and go short, but I'm never going long and short the same symbol on the same day. It would be impossible to have conviction in something that it's rallying and getting bought and selling off at the same time. That I would call no conviction. So when you have conviction in a trading strategy, you can risk a substantial amount of money per trade. And when you don't, you shouldn't risk really any money at all. And the problem is a lot of people trade and they don't have conviction. They don't understand what this means. This is something that I talk about a lot and really teach more in the class. Um, somebody had a question here. What about the skill part? The skill part is you have to understand how to read a chart, you know, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more here when I show some charts. So when you think about it, if you're interested in gaps, you have to be available because most of the entries are between 930 and 10. If you like to make money quick, get in, get out, okay? And obviously, if you want to work from home. But if you want to and do it for a career, I tell people, go into it slowly. Learn how to do it. Train every morning if you can. Keep your regular job. Make a transition for yourself. Or maybe if you can only do it two days a week or three days a week so that you can prove to yourself that you can gain the skill and the knowledge to do it and also be disciplined with the risk, okay? So really for me, it's about the focus. Like this morning, I was laser focused, okay? Right now, it's earnings season. So there is so many things for me to be rating in the morning that are gapping. Most of stocks that gap are gap on earnings. And so because of that, I was laser focused. First trade out of the gate today was X, okay? You can, you can look at that. We did it, it went to the target. The target was $20, we shorted it, we got in, we got out, boom, done. Trade happened and set up very, very quickly, and it was a short, and we got in and went to the target and got out. It was a nice trade. It was a baby move, but that stock doesn't have jimongous moves, but it worked and went right down to the target and very quickly. So when you're laser focused, okay, it also helps you make money. So my belief system is that one strategy is all you need to be successful. You can use the strategy to do day trades. You can use the strategy gaps to do options or you can use them to do swing trades, whatever you wanna do. 
but it's looking at the institutional money, okay? If you learn how to read institutional money in the market, you don't need to do anything else. It's how I call that the market was holding the uptrend in December. That was a great call. In fact, my father said to me when he saw me on Fox and everyone was disagreeing with me, he said, he said do you really want to be saying the market's still bullish? I said, yes, Dad, because I'm, I'm right. Don't worry about it. And now it's very obvious that I was right, but I was right. I was like one of the only people on TV saying that, and I was right. So, you know, I was reading the institutions, and I didn't see institutional money selling into the market in a way that was breaking that trend in the month of December. Now it's more obvious, but it was really my skill set, someone brought up about skills, that made me see that by how I read gaps in the market. There was no gap in the market that broke the trend in the market in December. So what do I do? I read price, I read price action and gaps. That's how I predict where something is going. It's how I can see movements ahead of time in charts that gap. It's called price forecasting. It's, it's technical analysis. Forecasting is the use of historic data to determine the direction of future trends. Businesses use forecasting to determine how to allocate their budgets. It's the same thing. You're predicting, well, I'm going to put this much money in it to invest in it to go there, okay? That's what you're doing. You're forecasting it. You're looking ahead. It's price forecasting, okay? Now, this is not about predicting bottoms. I didn't predict that this was the bottom in the market. All I was saying was we're still going to be higher, and we never broke trend in here when this was occurring. Now, as it turns out, maybe this will be the, the low of the market that happened back the last week of the year in 2018 for a while. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is you're not buying and looking to predict lows, just like you're not looking to predict highs to short, okay? What you're looking to predict is where to go long at a placement that is going to take it right there. We're going to get the momentum. And you're seeing that in the market actually in the last two days. Like yesterday and today, the market had two gap ups that you could have gone long. They were predictable to take the longs. You could have done them as options trades or you could have done them as day trades. Okay? And again, like I said, depending on where Amazon goes tonight on the earnings, if Amazon is up on the earnings, Amazon could rip. Now, I don't know if that happens. I have absolutely no idea. Amazon might gap down. Amazon might gap up and sell off. I don't know. But I'm telling you, there is a possibility that Amazon might rip on the earnings. And if it does, the market is really going to go. And so when, when I'm seeing the gap, which I can't, I, I can't say until I see it, then I'll know. So when would that happen? When Amazon reports tonight after 4 o'clock, whatever time they report between 4 and 5. Okay. So that's something that you could watch tonight. It's very interesting to see if you've never seen a gap happening live. You must have your pre-market and post-market data up to watch it. But Amazon is something that it's very interesting if you want to watch it tonight. Now, I called this in the market. This was a good call. I called the SPY calls. and actually called the Q calls, too. I called this on the 24th. Okay, look at where the SPY is right now. This expires tomorrow. It was a good trade to get out of it today. This was an option trade. So here you see, I called it on the 24th. Let's go up here. I called it here, and then poop, it went, shoo. And th again, this is from yesterday. Today we're up, I don't know, somebody can look and see where the SPY is right now, but we're well through 264, okay? Well through 264, yesterday you could have actually got out yesterday. We were $4 through the strike yesterday. Again, this is a call that expires tomorrow. So again, I'm looking at the gaps, okay? And then I rate it. And the gaps tell me the momentum, okay? So I'm reading the footprints of institutional money in a chart. And that is really what I'm seeing. And I'm saying this gap is going to take the stock over the number to this target, to the strike. And in this case here, this is a long, so it would be buying. But again, sometimes we do shorts. In fact, I prefer to do day trades as shorts. And the reason is because I like fast trades. X today is a good example because it was a quick one. So sometimes in the morning you do a quick trade short and you're looking for 50 cents, a dollar, whatever you're looking for. Now, here's another example of volatility, okay? Again, let's go over the gap. This, is, this was a chart back from December, but it was a good example of volatility I want to show you. Stock closed here the night before around 40-something. Gap down in the morning here around 32. This was an earnings gap. Here's the volume. Again, this is a day chart. Now, on the live day, 
This is a baby chart here. Again, here's the close, here's the open. This is a one minute chart. So here's what this stock did. It rallied, dropped, rallied again. We shorted this. This was an expert call because we shorted it and look what it did. So this is this tail forming up. We were in the trade. We didn't get stopped, it worked. It was a short though, not a long, okay? So I forecasted the price of the stock would drop. We did it in here where I had the stop. We didn't get hit out and then it finally broke. It just took about 15 minutes to go and break. But again, very often volatility is good. You think something's gonna go one way and then it goes another way. So you have to know before the open which way it's gonna go. Otherwise, again, you're going long, you're going short, you're taking it, you're killing it. It's, you're all over yourself in your head and you don't have the conviction because you really don't know what you're supposed to be doing. One minute you think that it's a long and then you're like, wait a minute, no, it's not a long, it's a short, wait a minute, am I right? And that's how a lot of traders get chopped up. So I don't trade like that. I'm either going long it or I'm shorting it. But because I rated the gap in the morning on the day chart, I said, wait a minute, this rate's good per my system. This is a short, okay? The fact that it backed up and made that tally thing is irrelevant, okay? We took it as a short, it worked, it paid, it dropped, it was a good trade, okay? But this is again about skill set because if you're just looking here on the one minute chart, you might have thought this was a long, okay? But that would have been the wrong way to go. Here is another one. This was a good one. Again, January, CAT. CAT closed here, <laughs> excuse me, around 137. Gap down here in the morning around 127. Boom. Fell. This was a short. This was a day trade that we did. This was on the 28th, okay? So here is the one-minute chart. We trade in the one-minute chart. If you're in the trading room with me, I call the trades. Boom, boom. Call the entry and the exit. We take them on the one-minute chart. Stock closed here, gap down. Open, rallying, broke. So every day I'm looking for this. Do, do, do. This is what I'm looking for, to get the move in and out between 9.30 and 10. Now this one here, you could have got in and out, or you could have held it a little bit more if you wanted to. As you see here, this closed very weak. Okay, or you could have done it a couple of times. That was a bearish gap, and it was a good short. Okay, so the entry in this one, and was 126.25, exit was 124.70. Now it ended up going further, but again, 15.50, boom, boom, just like that. You take it, you get out. You take it, you get out. When you're a day trader, you're looking to book bunny quickly, okay? You're not looking to hold it to some big number, which you might want to in an option trade or if you're in a swing trade. This is like take it, get out, take it, get out, take it, get out when you're a day trader. I do not trade gap fills. That is a fallacy. Gap fills do not work. Now you might say to me, Melissa, I've seen this happen, this happen, this happen. No, when a gap fill occurs, you know, I don't, I, <coughs> I don't have any examples of this in here to show you, but when a gap fill occurs, it's not being made by institutions. It's not being made by power money. It's not being made by big money. Sometimes what happens is a gap moves against a certain direction and you could say, well, that filled the gap, but I don't talk like that. It's a wrong way to speak or talk. And, and actually, if I, if I spoke like that on TV, people would think I'm nuts. No one talks like that. Traders talk like that because traders are doing those things and it's wrong actions. You do not, cannot consistently make money trading gaps as gap fills. They do not consistently work. Every once in a while, a stock will do what you would say is doing a gap fill, but it's traders that are taking that move, not institutional money. Do you think that the trading desk at Goldman Sachs is saying, oh, let's buy this stock today to fill the gap? Hell no, they're not, okay? I'm seriously looking at institutional moves when I'm doing this, and that's how I'm figuring out. That's the genius in my system. And one of the reasons that I've called the market so well and that you can use the system for options because you can get big moves. A gap fill is a temporary move in the opposite direction of something that happens. It does not consistently work and it is not traded by institutional money. It is made a move made by traders. I do not wanna go with the things that traders do because most traders lose. You come and you learn how to trade from me, you're really gonna learn something that actually you could take at such a good skill set to read a chart that you could go on TV like I am 
and you could actually run a trading desk and you actually could even probably manage money for people. You are not doing this with what other people do as far as gap fills. I do not talk like that, but I know people do, but it doesn't make any sense. I hope I, hope I made my point well enough on that. <coughs> um, here's GME. This, I mean, just was a really good one and you could have even held it longer. But again, I like to look at the morning, get in, get out. Stock closed here around 1550, open in the morning around 1237, boom, fell. It was a short, it was a nice short. Here's the move. We did it, got out, boom. We could have did it again here and got out. It doesn't matter, but I like the quick ones. Okay, you could have done it once, you could have done it twice. This rated 20 points. We entered it at 1216, exited at 1168, $2,400 in less than five minutes. That's a day. And that works for me. Now, if you held this, let me go back to the daily, it actually went down. I don't know where the low of the day was. It almost hit 11. So, I mean, you could have made almost 60 some, almost 70 cents more if you held it. But again, I like to trade the morning. I think it's very important to book profits when you're up. In fact, that's something that, again, you really got to be conscious of if you're day trading. Remember, you have to get out before four. At four o'clock, the market closes. So a lot of people ask me, what experience do you need? I have some people doing extremely well that have did my class. I have one woman, she's consistently making $1,000 a day and she did the class in October. She never traded in her life. So you really don't need any experience. I find that people sometimes that have experience have very bad things in their head that, that prevent them from listening to me or doing well. The gap fill thing is a, is a perfect example where I might short something that somebody might have learned they should go long and then obviously they don't listen to me. So people that are new sometimes do very well immediately. But if you have experience trading and you're open-minded to learn what I know, you still could do well immediately. So it doesn't necessarily have to take that long. You can do well right after the class. And if you're in the trading room with me, you will if you listen to me and take the calls. But the nice thing about trading gaps is that it's a short time each day and I really think that that is beneficial. When you have all these news things and Trump tweets and somebody talks and something happens and <clears throat> you know it's just so much so much that's going on right now in the world you have these things that can make these wiggles and jiggles in your positions on the market so if you want to be an active trader i really think focusing on one time period in the morning is is beneficial for your profitability so what do i do i get up in the morning and i rate the gap in the pre-market and i go through a checklist it's a 26 point checklist that tells me that the stock will have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Doesn't mean I'm gonna hold it the whole day, but ideally. A big move, which I like. Uh, early confirmation of the bias. Again, between 9.30 and 10, right into the open. And then I'm looking for one minute precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward target potential. Very, very important, okay? So how much you make is really only a function of how much you risk though. So you're looking for one to one. So if you risk 50 cents, you're looking to make 50 cents. If you risk 20 cents, you're, you're looking to make 20 cents. Sometimes you'll risk 20 cents and make 40 cents. Sometimes you make two, sometimes you make three. Okay, you never know. <coughs> you really never know, but I do think you have to watch time of the day and you have to watch your targets. And I teach that in the class as well. Now this was another option. Uh, one trader just emailed me. He did it. He got out. He made 200 bucks. I told him it's going to go over the high. I don't know where this is right now. Somebody can tell me where Starbucks is at. I, I, I knew this was going to go over the high in the time I called this trade. So this was a call, okay, to buy the calls in Starbucks. And this also had earnings here too. So stock closed here, gap up. This was the day of the earnings. It had a baby move. Didn't really spike. I forget what the market was doing that day. But anyways, long story short, it was still setting up to take it over the high. I, I predicted that the stock would go over the high. Someone tell me right now if this is over the high. So it would have to be over 69, 69.70. Anyways, this is gonna take it over the high. So this gap up here in the earnings is gonna take the stock over the high. So I called this trade, it was 68 calls and it's got another week and it could even get over the high today. If you did it though, <coughs> you could have done it. You could have got it yesterday and just made a little, but it really is gonna go over the high. 
So some trades you don't have to hold even that are options. You could just do them and then when they make the move, holy crap, it is going to go over the high of today, 68.95. Oh my gosh, it's such a great call. That trader, I don't know why he exited that trade. He emailed me. I got out. I said, why did you get out? I told you it's going to go over the high. But yeah, what a great call. Oh gosh, I'm so good at what I do. I knew this would go over the high. Yep. This is, this could even go to 70 today. <clears throat> In fact, this has another week. Um, and if Amazon gaps up tonight, yeah, this, this whole thing, this, this just proves my point because this is happening live right now. I mean, the market is too. But anyways, the market that, this would have gone anyways without the market. Does that make sense? Like this would have gone anyways. So like a lot of things are rallying today because of the market, but this would have gone either way. Does that make sense? Like some trades when you're in them, like for example today, you could have gone along a lot of things today and made money because of the market. Not everything, but some. Even X, luckily we got out at 20 because that flipped, okay? So even things that were weak, even things that were weak are rallying today because of the market, but this would have gone either way, okay? So again, the, when, when you're trading, the best thing that you can do is not need the market, okay? But every once in a while, you do or you are in something that is good anyways, which would have been Starbucks if you had done it, that the market's going to help it go even bigger, okay? Anyways, if you had gotten out of this yesterday, which I'm just showing you an example of how a small profit is even profit, uh, a beginner risk in this would have been eight contracts. You could have bought it for 60 cents and sold it yesterday for a buck. It's, I don't know what it's worth now, but it's obviously more than that. Return on investment, 66%. That's good for a little trade for a couple of days. If you had taken an advanced risk, 80 contracts, 4,800 risk, you would have made 3,200. This is in less than a week. This is not a day trade. This is an option trade. And you don't need options. You don't need a margin account to trade options. So that is very, very uh, uh, appealing for some people where they can trade in the morning, they have a job, and they don't want to worry about a margin account. Because if you're going to set up an account with a broker, a retail broker for a margin account, you need to set them out. Or you can go to a prop account, okay? A prop account, you need 2500 to open up. A retail account, you need 25000 to get 4 to 1 leverage. And a prop account, they usually give you 10 to 1 leverage. This is to actively day trade. But an option account, you don't need 25000 and you don't need to worry about margin, okay? So... Doing options is another way to use my system if you don't want to have to worry about margin and if you can't trade every morning because these trades are whenever I call them. Now this here, when did I call it? I called it before the open because I rated the gap in the morning. That was 9.13. Yeah. So anyways, how do I do it? The checklist, that's what you would learn in my course. I rate the gap. If it rates good, 20 points or more, you take it in the direction of the gap. Any questions so far? I knew that was going to go over the high. What a nice call. So why do people find day trading so hard? Well, because they, they're not focused. And when you're not focused, then you have a lack of clarity. And so then you're second guessing yourself. You don't have any conviction. So it's hard to make 30 grand a month, 40 grand a month. It's hard to make $1,000 a day. It's hard to make 100 bucks a day, okay, if you don't have focus or clarity. Because sometimes the market is tricky, okay? But the conviction comes from the knowledge. That's what you learn from me in my class. And one of the reasons I'm so good at what I'm doing is because I've been doing this for more than 10 years. So I have a lot of conviction in my system. I created it, number one. And number two, I've been doing it for 10 years. That's a long time to do one thing. It's a long time to not necessarily trade, even though it kind of is, but to do one thing. I mean, I literally don't do anything else. It's not like you would come and there's like a million classes of different strategies from me. I'm, this is it. Like, you only need this. But you can use it in different manners options, day trades, swing trades. Someone had a question here. How do you determine the direction of your trades? This, the checklist. I rate the gap. I rate the gap at a checklist process that I do in the pre-market. When if the gap rates 20 points or more per my checklist, which I teach in the class, it's 16 hours, then this is, this is the meat and potatoes of what I do. This is how I can tell and it's going to go in the direction that it's, that it's going if it rates 20 or more. So if I rate it and it rates 22 and the stock is gapping up, 
then it's a long. If it gaps down and it rates 21, it's a short. Now, I don't enter the trade until it sets up. I still don't enter the trade until after the live day, okay? Interesting, you are the embodiment of master one thing and mastering it well and making a comfortable living, yes. I've mastered it so well that I'm talking on national TV. And I'm talking with people, and I don't wanna to get too off target here, but talk about conviction, like I was talking about this earlier. Like, I'm facing, I mean, you can go and see my clips on YouTube, like I'm facing people that think that they know better than me. And in December, that was really, like, it was really head to head. And I held my ground about my bullish uh, call in the market. But, you know, when you're on with some people that are like, I mean, these people are like way older than me on TV in million years. I mean, I'm not going to say any names, but I'm just telling you, like, there are people out there that think they know everything. And they really thought that they knew everything in December. I, I stood my ground. I held my ground. And, you know, I held the conviction. And I was right. Because <clears throat> it's very important to me to go on and say what I think is correct. And actually, everything I've said on TV, every call I've made has been correct since I've been on for 18, 19 months since I've been on TV. That's phenomenal. A lot of times, people go with the wind. So if the market's falling, they say it's bearish. If the market's rallying, they say it's bullish. No, you can't be like that. That's not conviction. But anyways, as far as the mastering of it, it's, it's, it's given me the confidence, that's the word I'm looking for, to speak on TV because I could have been wrong. Now, I wasn't. But I could have been, but I wasn't. And I knew that I wasn't, so that's, that's why I said what I did. So, you know, I'm not saying that I know everything. <clears throat> I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that I know what I know. And so what I say it, then I know it. I don't know if that makes any sense. So, like, I don't, I don't, I can't tell you where every single stock, like, I have no idea if Amazon is going to gap up. I do not know. I do not know. I'm telling you that right now. But I'm telling you that there's a possibility that if Amazon gaps up tonight, it's going to rip. And the market will rip too. Okay? Because the momentum has already come in. The momentum is already coming in. Do you see what I'm talking about here with this? Like with institutional money? Today the market's getting bought. You got everybody in probably today. You got traders. You got institutions. But the institutions are in. But they were never really out. I'm just going to go back to this here. I don't want to get too off topic. Let me see if I can find this spy chart. Here. They were never out. They, were, they weren't really out. Here. Where's that other bigger one? Here. <coughs> so the institutions weren't really out. They were always there. They were, they were there. Like to me, I saw them, but other people didn't. Because people are looking at higher highs and higher lows and lower lows and lower highs. And that's not how you determine a trend. People also look at moving averages. I do have moving averages on my charts, but that's not how I determine a trend. And even though we had these moving averages come down, and this is this red line to 200, even though the market had traded under the 200 pre-moving averages, still wasn't in a downtrend. Anyways, I don't want to get too off topic, but um, get back to what I was saying here. Anyways, 2019 is going to be volatile. So even though we're rallying, guess what? What if Amazon gaps down? We could fall, fall tomorrow in the market. And then everyone could say, oh my gosh, see, we didn't hold and we're falling. But, you know, we're still holding the uptrend. So volatility is where you think something is going in one direction. And then it goes in a different direction. And you're going to see a lot of that this year. And you're going to see... You're going to see more of that this year than you saw even in last year. Okay, you haven't yet, but I'm telling you, prepare yourself because you're going to. <clears throat> so you're taking money out of the market in daily fast moves. That's what day trading is if you want to do this, if you want to learn my system, if you want to do with me. And you have to look at it as a process. So set your goals. A thousand bucks a day would be about 250 grand a year, give or take. Now, some days the market's closed. Some days there isn't any good gaps, that's rare, but some days we rate things and I say, well, there isn't anything good. Now, right now it's earning season, so there is a lot of good things, but you have to look at it as you're chunking it out. I talked about this a little bit earlier with cash positions and margin positions. When you're day trading, you need margin to trade. You don't need $100,000 in your account to take 1,000 shares of $100 stock price. You need the margin, but you don't need the cash 
So when you're day trading these positions, like I just showed you for the ones that we didn't cat, you didn't need the cash equivalent. You, you, everyone that day trades, I trade a margin. Now, if you're doing an option trade, all you need is the cost of the option. If the option costs a dollar, that's what you would pay. The price of the stock wouldn't matter to you, okay? Wouldn't be based on the price of the stock, it'd be based on the cost of the option. So either way, whatever works for you. But again, I don't trade penny stocks, they're junk. No institutions are buying penny stocks, so that's why we don't trade them. And they, they're very, very, very risky to trade. When I put a stop in, when we take a trade, when we take a position, we're gonna get filled and we're gonna get in, we're gonna get out. They're traded heavily with lots of volume, okay? So again, I look at it like, well, you're taking it and you're trying to get a move. And so if you risk 50 cents, you're trying to make 50 cents. Sometimes you might take 1,000 shares, it might be a big stop. Sometimes you might be able to take 4,000 shares, maybe it's a small stop, okay? You don't know. You don't know. Every stock is different. We trade in a range of stocks in the price point. Obviously, X was a lot differently priced at 20 something than CAT, okay? But you achieve your goals by chunking it out. You take it, get out. Take it, get out. If, you're, if you make your goal Monday, then you could still trade the rest of the week, but you have to look at it as a larger thing, a larger process. So if trading is something that you want to do for a living, you can do it. I mean, I have some very successful people with me. I've been with me for years. I've been with me for months. It's just something where you really have to be focused. Uh, I do think it's important to listen to what I say in the room. If you want to be in the room, you must take my class to join the room. But if you're interested in a trial, you could, you could email me. You could come to trial tomorrow morning and see what we get. And you could trial the room next week. But there are, there are risk and rewards in everything you do. There's an upside and there's a downside. The only downside in trading is that there's a cost to learn. You have to take my class and my class costs $6,000. So if you want to learn it, there's a cost. And so, you know, it's going to be a time investment. It's going to be a financial investment. But the upside is that you learn how to do something that you can profit, not just for a couple of weeks, but for years. And the irony is that I do mostly short and I created my system in a bullish market and we're obviously still in a bullish market. So whether the market's bullish or bearish, it doesn't really have any effect on what I do with my trades. So if you're interested in doing this, you can learn, you can work from home. My class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when and in what direction. The 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in the stock. This is what you learn in the class. Again, like I said, it's the meat and potatoes. My next class is February 9th and 10th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Cost of the class is $59.99 US dollars. If you're interested, you must email me to sign up. Again, you can have a trial if you want for Friday or next week. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. I offer a trends course. This is more for swing trading, but it helps you with your day trading. This is the 25th of February. It's $1,000, but if you sign up for both together, you save $500. And, um, you know, really, I think learning is very important. It's, it's, a, it's a gift that you're giving to yourself because you're making a personal investment in yourself for your future. And if it's something that you're not willing to do, then you're not serious about trading, okay? So the people that come and learn from me are serious because they're paying $6,000. They're gonna sit for 16 hours in a two-day class all weekend, and they're gonna devote themselves to doing it. Now, the time during the week, though, isn't that much because we're in and out so quickly. So you only have to be in the trading room really between 9 and 10, uh, 9 and 10.30 some days. You don't have to devote a lot of time to actually trading. The time is in the process of the learning and going through it. I definitely think it is less stressful though when you follow someone because I have so much conviction in what I do. It helps people when I call the trades and when I do it. But, you know, so many people want to come and they want to take other people's trades. And one of the reasons I don't let people join the trading room until they do the class is because I only want serious people. And I also want people to be successful and you won't be successful unless you learn it. One of those trades was big. Big was, big took a while to break. That was a short back from the end of last year. And it, it really rallied a lot, but we were in it short. So we took the trade and we were down before it went. If you didn't understand what was happening in that gap, you might've killed it killed it with a loss before it went, but it went on to work and it never stopped us out. For some peop for some reason, and, and again, I've been teaching people for six, six and a half years, I've been trading for more than 10, but since I've had the stock swoosh, I will find that people want immediate gratification. I get that, I'm, I'm, I get that totally, but you have to look at the bigger picture in the long term if this is something you really, really wanna do. If it's something that you're not serious about, well, that's a different story, okay? 
many people would prefer to slowly be in pain, losing a little bit of money, slowly day by day and week by week, and people do this, and even month by month and year by year in the market versus investing in education upfront in one chunk of money. Somehow, the, the slow idea of dragging the pain out and losing money just directly to the market is easier for people. But in the end, it's really harder because it really wears on you. It's, there's an emotional toll by having something go on for a very long period of time, even if you're losing uh, a couple hundred dollars a week, a couple thousand dollars a year. There's an emotional pain that goes on when you allow yourself to drag in that quagmire for years. And yet that's what people do. They think that it's easier, that the slow pain is easier, but in the end, the emotional toll is very devastating to your mind. And, and obviously you're still losing, so it's devastating to you financially. So it's not easier, is the point I'm trying to say. One of, the, one of the stories, and this man still has not done my class, I haven't talked to him, and I don't know where he's at. He was determined to do my class in the fall, and he didn't. He had $20,000 in his trading account, and he told me over the phone, I don't have enough money to take your class. I said, what are you talking about? You just told me you have 20 grand in your trading account. He said, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel like I have enough money yet. I said, okay. So he's like, I'm going to trade on my own, and then I'll, I'll, I'll save more than to do your class. I said, okay. Well, I follow up with him the next month in October. He said, I don't have enough money to take your class. I said, what are you talking about? I said, you know, how are you doing? He lost half his account trading on his own. It's in one month he lost 10 grand. I don't know if he has any money left. I certainly hope that he does, but until he learns, he's going to keep losing, and he's going through a painful process. And actually, that wasn't even a slow pain. That was a lot of money to lose in one month for someone with a $20,000 account. To lose 50% of your account in a month is painful. So it's, it's very hard for me as a, as a teacher to say anything other than the truth, and I'm telling you the truth. In the end, it's not easier to slowly lose. In the end, the emotional toll that it takes on you, it, it ends up being harder for you to overcome. So when people come to me and they've never traded before, sometimes, like I said, it's easier because they have no experience from ever losing in the market. So they're very optimistic. So they learn it, they do it, they say, oh, here it is, it's easy. But when people are go through the slow pain for five years, eight years, 10 years, longer, it, in their mind, their mindset is that the market is going to steal their money and that nothing works because for so long they've lost. Does that make sense? So you have, I'm, I'm saying this and I'm teaching something here so that you're in awareness of it. If you have a negative attitude and if you're one of these people that I'm talking about, or if you're like this guy here, you can change your mindset. You, first of all, you have to just admit that you have this mindset and that you have to change it because you will never be successful unless you do. You just won't. Okay. And that's just the reality of the situation. So while it's true that not all trading education out there is good, I'm sure there's some that's very, very bad. It's also true that not all trading education is bad. Some is good. The problem is that people never are sure if they will learn enough to cover the cost of education. For example, my class is six grand. How long will it take you to make that back? I don't know because I don't know what you're risking. If you're risking an advanced amount pretty quickly, if you're following me in the room, they feel like they're losing for paying for education, many people. Meanwhile, they're losing the market year after year. So what should people do? And how should people think about making educational choices? I say, listen to your intuition. You know, many people know. You know if you heard me today that anything I said made sense. Or some, maybe you, you, you can't resonate with any of this. You don't like to trade gaps. You don't like to short. I don't, I don't know. But I'm telling you that your intuition usually tells you what's right or what's wrong if you trust yourself. But it is definitely not better to slowly lose money. It is better to learn. And that is just something that to me is very common sense. It's like saying, well, you would go and you would try to apply for a job somewhere as a doctor in a hospital without having edu any education. Well, they're, they're not going to hire you. But even if you lied and somehow got hired and said you knew what to do, what are you going to do? I mean, you're, you're going to do horrible at the job. And eventually then you're going to get fired. Okay. You can't make it in any job where you're going to make any substantial amount of money without education. So again, we already talked about this 2019. I think it's going to be a very uh, volatile year in the market. Does anyone have any questions? At the end of my time here, I don't want to go over. Um, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you have questions. You can email me at info at thestockswish.com if you want a trial. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. If you're in the market this week, watch Amazon tonight and email me if you have any questions about the class or the trial. Thank you.